Can a 60 year old retire with $750,000 saved up? The answer is sure they can, but what they want to live on may not be enough. Lightning strikes and then you're gonna know my name. Okay, I get this all the time where someone will come into the office and say, I have X number of dollars saved up, can I retire? Well, it's not all about how much you have saved up, but we, what you need to do is nail down what your living expenses will be. What do you want to live on? What are the things you want to do in retirement that requires money? That's, that's really important. So let's take a look at this example of someone, we're going to hit this in a minute, someone age 60 who wants to retire and has $750,000 saved up. And to do that, we're going to look at this financial planning software to illustrate. Hey, before we do that, if we haven't met before, my name is Keith Wilson. I am a financial advisor helping folks just like you get prepared for retirement. Okay, first of all, let's set up some assumptions here. Here are the assumptions. We've got a single person, aged 60, we'll call him Mr. 60. He has 700000 in a 401k and $50,000 in a money market account. He's making $120,000 at work, and what he was doing, he was maxing out his 401k. He wants to live on $4,000 a month after taxes in retirement, and he wants to take trips each year that will cost $10,000. He has no debt. His Social Security benefit will be $2,400, and $75 a month at full retirement age. And we will adjust these numbers with inflation. All right. Now the question is, can he do it? Here we go. So we're going to dive in to the software right now. And we see right here, again, he's 60 years old. He wants to live on $4,000 a month. That's his living expenses to pay for utilities, groceries, gas, going out to eat, shopping, whatever he wants to do. On top of that, we have to account for health care costs. And the software is calculating for Mr. 60 that that's going to be $6,092 a year. And we've got to calculate for uh, long-term care costs. And this is usually the last two years of life of uh, 68,000. And again, this is going to be adjusted for inflation. But on top of that, as we said before, instead of just staying at home, spend $4,000 on his normal stuff, like to go on some trips. And he says, I want to spend $10,000 a year. And I think we said for 10 years. And again, we adjust that for inflation after 10 years I guess we're going to evaluate. So those are the assumptions. That's what he's got. Let's let's look at that again. Uh, so you see here, fifty thousand in a bank, seven hundred thousand in a four hundred one k. We know what he wants to spend. Can we do it? We're going to hit the retirement tab. Oh, uh, this does not look good. It, the the software is calculating. Hey, it's a zero percent chance. Let's look at some action items, see what's going on. Um, the f so we can fudge with these numbers and say, the first thing I want to look at is, hey, how are your investments looking? The way he's invested right now, current allocation, it's pretty much 35% equity, 65% fixed income. So this is a very conservative allocation. So the first thing I would look at, hey, look, you are age 60. We look at your risk tolerance and risk capacity. Just because you're getting ready to retire doesn't mean you just go all cash. We need we need to, you know, up some of the uh, risk to take into account for inflation. Let's just Let's just bump them up to moderate. So moderate level of risk technically is 60% equity, 40% bonds. Let's see what that does 
to his outcome. Okay, we're making progress. He's at 12% degree of success uh, based on this uh, software. So then we've got to look at it and say, Mr. 60, what's more important to you? That you retire at 60 or that you definitely want to spend 4000 a month in retirement and you definitely want to spend uh, ten, an extra 10000 a year for your trips and other goals. So if, if, if the situation is, look, I got to get out at age 60, then we might have another conversation or is, are you retiring uh, from something or are you retiring to something? And that's a whole nother story. But let's say, no, I want to get out at 60. That's that's my thing. Well, we got to sacrifice. Maybe we got to say, you can't live on 4000 So let's change this to 3000 a month. We'll keep your trip money at 10000 a year. Or are we making, pro- oh, we made a lot of progress. A lot of progress. So normally... When I see this degree of success, you see an, a 67% degree of success. Don't look at that as a grade in school because 67% is pretty much failing. But look at it as, hey, you're going in for a surgical pr- procedure. You have a 67% degree of survival. I don't still don't like that number. I like to see it in at least 72, 75%. So we, what we've changed so far is we changed them from very conservative, just to middle of the road, moderate, and we said, you can't live on 4,000, it looks like 3,000. So some would say, what about Social Security, 60? What if we pull the trigger early on Social Security because currently... You're saying he's going to pull the trigger at 67, full retirement age. So, well, let's do this. Let's say you're going to pull the trigger as early as possible at age 62 because he's got to rely on his investments for this income and health care expenses. So 2745 was his Social Security check per month. Let's see if that makes a difference. Actually, that hurt, believe it or not, because we're planning on a time horizon of to age 90. So that did not help, believe it or not. Let's go back to current strategy, get it back to 67. All right, what else do we have to play with? Because Mr. 60 said, I want to retire at 60. I don't care. Well, then... To be safe, this doesn't look so good. We're, it's better than zero. Uh, let's curtail your uh, travel or your vacation money. Let's drop it down to 8000 a year. Refresh. Remember, he has no debt. That's better. We're getting pretty close to being comfortable. Uh, let's, let's go down to 7000 a year on vacation money. That doesn't help a lot. So in in his situation, it looks a little a little bleak. But remember, all of his money was in 401k money. And I always preach three buckets. So wonder if he had planned ahead and maybe he had I don't know, uh, 300000 in the 401k, which is tax deferred. And then he had in a brokerage account, let's say 200000 digit. And then in the Roth money, oh, I love Roth. That's the tax-free. You follow certain rules, you'll be okay. So if he had it spread out, does that make a difference? Remember before, it was all 401k money. So let's see if that made a difference. Because I kept, look at that. So so just because he had his money spread out in those three buckets, 
his probability of success went way up. So maybe we can fudge a little bit and say, let's go back to the 4,000 if you had the three buckets. No, that didn't work. Sorry, 3,000, 7,000, refresh. It makes a big difference. So a couple of lessons here is asset location, where you have the money located, tax free, tax deferred, and then taxable versus all in one type of account. That makes a difference. So for this example, I would feel comfortable in saying, yeah, yeah, you can retire at 60 if you had those three buckets, uh, but we're going to have to pair you back a little bit on what you're going to spend each month and what your uh, vacation money is going to be. Another scenario, let's say Mr. 60 said, nope, I got to live on 4000 I've got to live on uh, the 10000 a year in allowance for my vacation, adjusted for inflation, so that's going to increase each month. Uh, what's it going to, what do I have to do to make that happen? Well, maybe you can't retire at 60. So let's bump this up to 64 and say, so you're going to have to retire at 64. What does that look like? Boom. So here's the lesson again. You either work a little longer or you decrease your living expenses, what you want to live on each month. What other goals that you have? It's all about a compromise. And again, these are scenarios we can do all kinds of strategies on Social Security. We can stress test it and things like that. Kind of a simple example, I know, but hopefully it gives you some idea and, um, and a reason why planning ahead is so important. And when I plan for my clients on this, uh, things are going to change. This is, this is going to change. The the only constant in life is change. What are taxes going to be like? What are the new rules are going to be like? Maybe they do with away with Roth conversions. You never know. You have to have at least some kind of plan. And I would rather plan to be approximately right than precisely wrong. So hopefully this gives you some insights. I would really advise you you know, if you're planning on retiring soon, get with a financial planner, a financial advisor that uh, can see your particular situation. This was kind of made up. That's so important. And if you need to talk to me, check out the resources below. Love to talk with you. Free consult on getting you started on your path. Anyway, hope you found this valuable. If you did, please subscribe to the channel. Give this video a thumbs up, and until then, we'll see you next time. A fighter don't know any limitations.